Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today I have a very good deal for you. I'm going to save you some brain cells in the future for free. Well, maybe for some of your time. You've done the hard journey. You've learned authentication in ASP.NET Core. Then some genius invented some AI and now you have to have a Python component. Some rogue developer decided he wants to be a hipster and had to write an API in Rust or Zig or whatever. That developer went away and had fun. You over there, you're thinking, how am I gonna authenticate this? I gotta learn authentication over here, over there, everywhere? This is where you can sit back, relax, and I'm gonna show you how you can reuse your authentication using YARP with your other components. If you're enjoying the video, leave a like, subscribe, you know what to do. Check out the description, join the Discord server, buy my course, and let's go ahead and proceed. Here is the project. I have the file system view because I have a Flask application over here, which doesn't open very well in a solution view. The PyCache, don't worry about that. We have a .NET Core project. We have the Flask application. Flask application is very small. We just have one endpoint and we're saying hello from Flask. Now the Flask and the .NET Core application are already running. If I open the Flask application, nothing is going to be here unless I go to API and then we see hello from Flask. On the other hand here, we see empty braces and that is because the landing page or the landing route in my .NET Core application is just spitting out the current user, right? We're doing authentication, we need this. Otherwise, we're attaching the YARP reverse proxy. If you haven't watched my video on YARP, link is in the description. Go ahead and watch that video. Otherwise, we're adding authentication. We have a simple login endpoint and then we're mapping the reverse proxy. In appsettings.json, this is where I'm setting up the reverse proxy configuration. I'm saying this route should target the Flask cluster. We're matching on this route, so slash Flask, and then the rest should be rewritten to slash API and then the rest on to the Flask address. So if I come back over here on the .NET application, if I go to Flask, I'm gonna get hello from Flask. Now let's say if our Flask component is not just a hello world application, it holds some super secret AI stuff and we want to pass user information from our ASP.NET Core application to this Flask API. The way that we want to do this and perhaps the way that we want to restrict access to this backend is by using some kind of authorization policy. Now, if we don't add the add authorization services right on here, so builder services add authorization, if we don't add this and we try to use something like require authorization over here, our application is actually going to crash and it's going to say you haven't registered these services. Now, as part of add reverse proxy right over here, add authorization gets registered by default and inside add authorization, I can't remember where exactly either authorization core, either authorization policy evaluator, Somewhere in here, when the application is going to start up, it is going to register the default authorization policy, which just requires the user to be signed in. And that is what we're going to be using by default. And this is what's described in the YARP documentation. If you look for authentication and authorization, you're going to see that you can specify the authorization policy right over here, which is just going to target the policy. And then there is also a couple of special values, default and anonymous. Default will require the default authorization policy and anonymous can allow an anonymous user through. So let's go ahead and grab the authorization policy right over here. We're going to come back to our configuration and we're going to say that now if we're going to be accessing this route, we want our default authorization policy and actually spell default correctly. Now, if we come back to our ASP.NET Core application over here, where we're trying to access Flask, if I refresh, I'm going to be redirected to the login screen. So this means I no longer have access to Flask unless I authenticate. Here I can log in. This is going to give me a user. If I land on the root, here is the user which is signed in right over here. If we come back and now I try to access Flask, we can see hello from Flask again. We're successfully protecting the Flask API using our ASP.NET Core component. If now we want to take the user information that we have and pass it along to the Flask application, we will have to add a transformation. If you watch my other videos, you've already seen me do. 
So add transforms here, you're going to have the transformation context builder or transformation builder context. And before we build up the transformation, I'm just going to restate if you're doing something along the lines of builder services, add authorization, where in here, you're specifying add policy, my policy, let's put a semicolon here, it will say policy builder and require authenticated user. If you want to use this policy to protect your flask or whatever API, you go ahead, take this policy and you place it over here. You can change this policy at runtime as well. This configuration is going to be reloaded automatically. Okay. I'm not going to require this policy. Perhaps you want to require this policy if the user has paid for this privilege to use the AI. And then all you're doing is you're adding an additional claim when the user is signing in, or you're adding that claim in your iClaims transformation and you're loading it in on every single request. So this authorization policy, let's comment it out. We're not that interested in it. We are more interested in attaching this user information. So for the route where the authorization policy is not null or empty. So if string is null or empty, let's close this off and give this a body. We are going to add a request transform. Uh, by default, we can return value task complete. I think it is semicolon in the end here, RTC. We're going to go to the proxy request and in here, we're going to have headers where we can add something custom X user JSON or something like that. And then we need the payload. So the way that I'm going to construct the user is the same way that I'm doing it over here. So let's take all of these claims from the claims principle here. We can get the claims principle from the HTTP context user pass the claims over here. We'll say that this is a var user dictionary, take the user dictionary, pass it over here and actually serialize it to JSON. So JSON serializer, serialize, and that's it. Quickly checking the terminal, this should reload and everything should be successful. Now on the flask side, also want to import a request over here. And this is going to look weird. I think this is weird as hell. This is how you access the request for this route. There is nothing that gets put into this function. For some reason, the request context is just available globally. So then you have the headers and then you want to get the header. So X uh, user JSON, let's say if we don't have anything, let's give it an empty object. This is going to give us our user. We can now take this user and perhaps I'll put it over here. So make this formatted. Ah, this is already formatted. Close off the paragraph, paste the user. That looks good to me. The Flask API should restart. Perfect. Now, if I refresh my .NET application, I have an empty user. So for some reason, the user is not being passed in. And that is because I am uh, messing up the if statement. If the authorization policy is not null or empty, that's when we want to pass it along. So let's come back over here again. Let's refresh. And now we see that Flask receives the user and you can do with this user anything that you want on the Python side. So if you need to authenticate some other component that you have in your ecosystem, you don't need to relearn all of the authentication for that ecosystem. You can relearn everything that you learn for ASP.NET Core and use its mature authentication system for all of your other components. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. If you would like the source code for this video, as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. A very big special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.